school classes or start getting with youth, whoever, and start deciding what would you like to do to show the church that you have talent. And sometimes you don't have to have a talent. You can get up here and sing a poem, sing a poem, say a poem. You can come dance. You can come do acrobatics. You can come up here and do whatever you feel like God would want you to do. It's just for us to get together right before Christmas and just laugh and have fun. So if you have something that you would like to do, you can do it as a family. You can do it in groups. I mean, it doesn't matter. We don't want it just to all be singing. I mean, y'all y'all hear us sing all the time, and we got some great singers, but there's a lot more talent sitting out here that we don't know about. So if you've got something you'd like to share, please let me know um, in the next couple of Sundays so that we can get it planned. So December the 16th, mark your calendar. Family celebration night, okay? And my lovely, talented sister now is going to bless you with a song.
<clears throat> would say this morning that we have already been in church, but I will tell you, we have already been in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. I want to say it's good to have everybody here this morning. Every one of you. I praise God for it. And you're right, Tim. It's a beautiful sight. Beautiful sight. And I'm praying for God to bless us this day in a very special way. Because there are things that we need in our lives this morning that God has for us. And all that we have to do is just open up this morning and trust him. That's all we have to do. Whatever you need today, God has it here for us. And I'm praying for him to bless us. I can't get all of you. But Nisha, it's good to see you and have you. Jimmy, it's certainly good to have you and Jonathan and y'all's family here today. And all the rest of you that are visiting, I, along with Tim, he's already said it, but I welcome you here and just ask you today to let God be with you. Now, I'm going to <clears throat> share with you again this morning, we're going to look at Just got a call, and Becky said she talked to him. He said that something was wrong. Yeah. Hamid just got a call, and he had to leave. Kent's mother has cancer, and she's been getting worse and worse, and he just got a call to get home. So I want us to pray right now for God to bless Kent and his wonderful family as they're in this moment with this tragedy. So will you all pray and agree with me and Jimmy this morning? Father, I thank you because you're the God that healeth your people. Our Lord, Kent needs a touch today. That family needs a touch today because they have a loved one. That Lord, if you, unless you say no, she will be gone. But God, we know that you know what's best. We don't question that. What I do ask you, Lord, is that as their mother lays there in such a condition that you give them strength, that you give them peace, and that whatever happens, they'll be able to stand upon the rock of Jesus Christ and be strong. So I thank you for taking care of them. I thank you for blessing them. And we claim victory in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jimmy. All right. <clears throat> We're going to take a father look this morning at what I've already, what I began to share with you last week. In that God wants to bless his people. He has blessings that we're not even aware of. And I'm going to share with you personally this morning. I'm going to ask you to listen to God's word. Because everything that has happened so far, every song that's been sung in the choir, what a selection of songs for this service. What a selection that Tish did for this service. It all comes together with what I'm going to share with you. And I don't believe you can be in a better atmosphere this morning to receive from God than right here, right now. 
I'm not talking about this church being better than anything else. I'm talking about the presence of God in this building. And it's there for whatever you need in your life. I've got to teach you about God's blessings. And I pray that you'll listen and that you'll learn. In the book of Psalms, 68, verse 19, it says, Blessed be the Lord, who daily loadeth us with blessings. Think about that. Who daily loads us with blessings. Isn't that something? Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Daily loads us with blessings. The God of our salvation is the one who does it. Father, we love you. We thank you. We trust you. God, give us strength today to speak your word. Let us all have the courage and the wisdom to accept it. Let your word penetrate our minds and hearts and let it do for us those things that we cannot do for ourselves. God, this morning, this church needs a blessing of God, a spiritual blessing that comes from heavenly places. We don't need to be blessed physically, emotionally, mentally, financially. God, the most important thing for us today is to be blessed spiritually. So open our hearts and minds and let us receive this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Last week, I shared with you from the book of Numbers. And it said, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you peace. He told Aaron, he said, Aaron, I want you to go tell my people. And you tell them just this, that the Lord bless you and keep you. Remember I had Dawson sitting up here in a, in a, in a chair. And I played God. And I said, Lord, I, I want to bless Dawson. I want to encourage him. God says, I'm going to keep you. That means God's protection is going to be around us. He's going to watch over us. And let, our, let his light shine upon you. And be gracious unto thee. The light of God is that joy of the Lord that comes to us in the midst of life, whatever it be, joy, tribulation, doesn't make any difference. That joy comes. And he lifts up our countenance. Whenever we get sad and we get down, as Tish was just singing about, when I'm right at that point, God comes along and his grace, his mercy can lift our face and the joy of the Lord can be upon it. It's not our joy. It's the joy of God. It's not us shining. It's God shining upon us. And it reflects off of us what God really is. And he said, you lift up your countenance and his peace, prosperity will be upon you. Now, these are the things that we talked about last week. And we read that. It's certainly good. We certainly like it. You remember I gave you a, I gave you a, a little story where, about the Indian. And he said before he went into the safe, before he saw what he had, he said, the grass is all gone, the sheep are all sick, the water holes are all dried up. But when he went in to count his money, he said, the grass is all green, the sheep are all well, and the water holes are full of water. You see, when we go through these trials in life, all, everything seems to be bad. Trials and tribulations, just everything around us seems to be bad. But if we can ever understand the blessings of God, I will promise you that even in the midst that you're in, you can cry out, oh, the grass is all green, all oh, the sheep are all well, the water has filled my hole, I'm, 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 my cup is full and running over, and I'll just drink from the saucer. Maybe the circumstances around you haven't changed, but the Spirit of God and the promises of God will change you during the midst of all those things. I am redeemed this morning. Whether or not I have troubles, it doesn't make any difference. Whether you have troubles, it doesn't make any difference. In the midst of everything we go through, we need to be able to shout out, I'm redeemed. I've been set free. And no matter what happens to this body, no matter what happens to my life, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that my heart is ready. And if Jesus calls me home, I'm ready to go. I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid of pain. I don't like it, 
But I want to tell you something. I'm redeemed. Therefore, I have something that the world does not know. I'm not who I used to be. I'm a new creation in Christ. He has redone me, remade me, and made me in his image. And everything that I have in this world belongs to him. And I trust him to bring those things to my life that I need most of all. Now, church, I'm going to tell you something. In these things, excuse me, that I'm going to share with you this morning, I'm going to give you five different things this morning. And what I want you to do is to accept and understand every one of them. I'm going to speak to you this morning as one who has is facing a tremendous trial in my life. My love is the Lord. I love this church. I love what I do. I love my family, the church family as well as my immediate family. I'm a blessed man. I understand all that. And more than a little over a month ago, everything in my life seemed right. Everything seemed good. I, I just don't understand. I was, I was doing wonderful. My health, according to the doctors, was good. Everything about my life was good. And all of a sudden, on the 15th of last month, everything changed. I had that stroke. I couldn't understand it, did not understand it, did not like it. But I stand to you this morning as one who's had a stroke, and because of that, I've been left weak on my right side. My, my mind plays games with me a little bit, not because I'm old, because of what's happened. I now have a problem in my neck that's going to have to be taken care of, a problem with my heart, a problem with my back. Yesterday, I got this sinus situation. All of these things are attacks upon the body of one who loves the Lord. I don't like them because they limit me from doing what I love best. And that's loving you, teaching and preaching and taking care of my flock. It has limited me in that, and that's what hurts me the most. I can, I can live with pain even though I don't like it. But the pain of not being able to take care of you is serious in my life. In the midst of all of this, I find pleasure in the fact that I am redeemed. I've been set free. I stand before you as one that's ready to go. I don't believe I'm going to die. I believe that God is preparing my body for the future, whatever it may be. I got to go through all of this. I refuse to let this be something that takes me down. I, I, I you know, I don't, <clears throat> I can wipe my nose I can limp. You give me a moment, I'll think right. Everything's going to be taken care of. But you can't deny the fact I'm going through it. You can't deny that. It's real. And I'm reminded of it every moment when I twist and turn and when I can't think. I'm reminded of it. But in the midst of all that, I'll tell you this morning that I have received spiritual blessings beyond measure. <laughs> and those... Those spiritual blessings are what keep me in the midst of all of this. God has given me things in my life spiritually that I've never had before. Had I not experienced this, I would not have experienced this, some of the great things of God. So, so what I'm sharing with you this morning, I'm sharing with you from a personal experience. This is not something... I think about, not something that you know, I am experiencing it. I may not be going through whatever you're going through. I may not. But I'll promise you, it is no difference in my life than it is in your life. Whatever Satan is bringing on you, 
is the same thing in the sense that God, the devil is bringing on me. But my God is able. My God will supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. Everything I need. Everything I need, he has. Now, when I say that God wants to bless us, and I read that verse to you. I had Dawson sitting there. I read that verse to you. God says, I want to bless you, and I want to keep you. What is it that God wants to do? What is it I'm trying to teach you? What are the blessings of God? I can look at myself and I say, well, God, you're sure not blessing me because look at the way I am. Look at what I'm having to put up with. You can say the same thing. God, look at me. I don't have the money I need. I don't have the health I need. I don't have relationships like I need. My marriage is not like it should be. My life is all mess. You can say all those things, but those are all external things in your life. When I look at all those things in my life, I say, yes, they're there and they're real and I don't like them. But I'll tell you one thing. The joy in my life is the joy of the Lord, not the joy of me. See, and that's where the difference is. The blessings that I have in my life may not be these things out here that I'm going through, but it's inside my heart. God has brought blessings to my life that control me, that control my mind, that keep me going in the face of everything that I've got going on in my life. The first thing that God blesses us with is the fact of his acceptance. Simply his acceptance. God has accepted us, and he, in accepting us, he has given us everything that we need to live in his life. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 6, it simply says that God has accepted us as we are. Do you understand that that means we are accepted in Christ, just like we are? God loves me. When I took my coat off the other day and I put it on Dawson, that was God's righteousness being imparted to him. Not my righteousness, but God's. And now he has that coat around him, just like I had this morning. This is God's righteousness. I was filthy. I was lost. I had no hope. I would belong to the devil. I sinned. I lived in that world. But one day I got my mind right, and I come to Jesus, and I fell on my knees, and I say, God, I want you to forgive me of my sins. I want you to take my past and make it just that, my past. I want a new life in you, and I want to learn how to love you and how to serve you as you are. And he looked at me, and he wiped those sins off, put his coat around me, and he said, Danny, I accept you just like you are. I've been accepted. My sins are gone. That means I'm highly favored and full of grace. Can you imagine what it is for God to say, I accept you? I accept you. God looked down one day at his son. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Do you realize that I'm an heir of God? That you're an heir of God? And that God wraps his coat around us? And when he puts that coat of righteousness on us, it makes us good through him. It makes us good because of him. And now that I'm good in Christ, I have a life that is set before me to live forever in the joy of the Lord. You see, I'm accepted, and we need to realize that day. I was once an old leper that nobody could mess with, but God took that old leper's body of mine and changed it into a beautiful man, a beautiful person. I've been accepted. God changes that part of my life, and for that, I thank God today, knowing that I am charming and I'm lovely and I'm graceful in the eyes of Jesus Christ. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you think about your life. You need to realize that's outwardly, but inwardly, God says you are are charming you are beautiful because you are my child and i love you just like you are i've been accepted in christ <laughs> that's his first blessing the next blessing is that we now have an inheritance in christ he gives us an inheritance first peter 1 3 through 5 it talks about that inheritance that we have and it is an inheritance that no man can take away. Do you understand the moment that we accepted Christ as our Savior? He gave us an inheritance. Think about it. If your mother or your daddy were to pass away today, you would have an inheritance. Whatever they had, you would have it. If I were to pass away today, my kids get my inheritance. And I don't care if I had $100,000 to leave them. 
they would spend it in no time, and it would be gone. I can leave them the things I have. I can leave them my guns. I can leave them things that were precious to me. But they would put them on a shelf, and it wouldn't mean anything to them after a while. It'd just be a whatnot, and eventually they'd get rid of it. We have an inheritance. But we have an inheritance in Jesus Christ that can never, ever be tarnished. An inheritance from him because he makes us a new creation. And the moment he makes us a new creation, he has reserved for us an inheritance in heaven. I have an inheritance from my heavenly father. And that inheritance is eternal. No one can take it from me. It's an inheritance to have life evermore. I have a mansion in heaven waiting on me, he says. I have an inheritance up there. Every th- my father owns the cattle of a thousand hills, and he owns the hills also. Whatever God has, whatever belongs to him, I have an inheritance, and I will have part of it. Everything that God is, think about this. Everything that God is, I have an inheritance of it. He is love. He is mercy. He is peace. He is everlasting. I have an inheritance of that. He is grace. I have an inheritance of that. Part of that is mine. And I thank God today that he has promised that he would bless us with a living hope today while I'm alive. It is a living hope. and it's a, My hope today as a human being rests upon the fact of what somebody can do or give for me. But Jesus gives me a living hope of an eternity because I have an inheritance with him this day in heaven. And I thank him. See, we, we can, have you ever dreamed? Have you ever, ever you, you guys... Have you ever dreamed of what you're going to be? Our, our young kids in here today. You ever dream? When I was a young boy, I used to dream about football, and I used to dream about I was going to be Raymond Berry, who was a great t- uh, end for the Baltimore Colts, and I was always Raymond Berry and Raymond Berry, and I was going to catch the balls like he did. And I was going to score like he did. I was going to get up to the pros like he did. Raymond Harry, he was my idol. You know, I thought everything about I could do this and I could do that. Have you ever thought about yourself being a, a pitcher? And you get up there and you you throw that ball against the wall and you're a great pitcher. And one day you realize, I'm going to be a great pitcher. I'm going to get Hank Aaron. I'm going to strike him out. He can't hit my ball. I've got the greatest curve. I've got the greatest sinker. I've got the greatest fastball. I've got the greatest changeup. God, I'm good. And I'm going to take care of him one day. You just wait and see. I'm good. And you talk about all these things, you know, that I realize that's a dream. That's a hope. That's external things. And I realized one day I would never be Roman Berry. I would never be able to catch passes like that. I would never be able to play in the pros. You might think you would never be that pitcher. You could never face Hank Aaron. You could never do those things. But in Jesus Christ, we have a hope, an inheritance. It's ours, and I'll guarantee you when you get there, you'll receive it. But he gives you part of that right here on this earth. Part of God is mine, and I love him, and I thank him for it. I'm guarded by Jesus Christ. I'm guarded. See, my inheritance is in heaven. So that means if it's up there, I'm, it, God guards it. Jesus Christ guards it. The Holy Spirit guards it. Now, who's going to take it from him? It is sure. That is his blessings. You have an inheritance. Every one of you need to think about this morning. I have an inheritance in Jesus Christ, and no one can take it from me. It's mine. It's sure. It's steadfast. And I love God because of that. So he says he, he gives us his blessings is that he accepts us. Once he accepts us, then he gives us an eternal inheritance. That's a blessing. The third thing he does is that he gives us deliverance. Deliverance. I think a lot about this one. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, he talks about God's deliverance. See, we have to believe that. Deliverance on my body, physically. He gives me deliverance. Now, if you understand this right, God's blessings upon us is his deliverance. We've got to understand that verse in in 2 Corinthians. Paul says, he has delivered me. He is delivering me. He will deliver me. That doesn't mean that God will take all these things from me outwardly. It means in my soul, in my heart, in my mind. He will constantly remind me of the things he's done in my past. 
how God has healed me, how God has taken care of me. You can think about it. I can go back in my mind to things that happened in the past. I don't understand how I got through it. All I know is that God was with me the day it happened. He stayed with me all that time up until now. He has given me deliverance in my heart and in my mind. He didn't take that thing away. He has given me deliverance. He did it then, so I remember that. And today, the things I'm going through, I remember that, how he did it there. So today, I, re- I realize he's going to do it today. And because of that, he realizes he's going to do it in the future. God is your deliverer. And you've got to believe that. You've got to accept that. He will deliver us from everything in our life. It means that he will come into our heart and give us peace. He will give us understanding in our mind that goes beyond understanding. He'll simply say to you, Danny, I'm here with you. These things are real. They're happening in your life. But I want you to look inwardly and realize your heart is strong because I am your heart. My grace and my mercy are upon you. He has delivered me from letting those things get in my heart. He's delivered me from letting it d- destroy me in my own life. He has delivered me for that because my heart cries out, God is my source. God is my strength. I am who I am by the grace and the mercy of God. He has set me free today, and he'll set me free tomorrow. God is my deliverer, and I claim his deliverance in my life today. That is his blessing. His blessing. But we've got to learn to look at that. We can't, we've got to take our eyes off of all of these things around us and begin to look at those things inside of us. So he is our accept. He accepts us just like we are. The moment he does, he gives us an eternal inheritance. Then he's promised he would deliver us from all these things around us. How am I going to get through? How am I going to be able to make it? How am I going to be able to preach? How am I going to be able to do this? Whatever is in your life, whatever you're questioning God about, Look inwardly, and God's blessings is, I will deliver you. He said, my grace will shine upon you, and I will lift your countenance up like this, and I will put the joy of the Lord and the light of the Lord upon you, and you will rejoice me with me in the very midst of everything that's going on in your life. God is our deliverer. Next, God gives us grace. Grace. One of the greatest blessings of God is grace. And the gra- God's grace is never limited. Never. It's an endless supply of God. Grace abounds, he says. Where sin is, grace abounds. The mercy of God. Grace that keeps us going. Grace that comes from heaven and heaven alone. During this, in, in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, he begins to talk about God's grace. This is whenever Paul, remember Paul had something wrong with him. Nobody really knows what it was. People have guessed. But the Bible says Paul had a thorn in his flesh. He had a physical problem, just like I've got a problem in my body. Just like every one of you have got a thorn in your flesh somewhere. You've had it in the past, you've got it now, you're going to have it in the future. A thorn, something that you don't understand. A thorn that gets way in there and you can't get it out. The Bible says Paul prayed time and time again. Three times he said, I went to God. Three times I prayed. And he said, God did not deliver me. But he said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. His grace. What is his grace? That thing that holds us up. That thing that takes care of us. Sometimes God's grace removes the burden that we bear. But sometimes God's grace strengthens our shoulders to bear the burden that we're carrying. we got to understand that. We pray, God, deliver me from this. And I prayed that prayer. Don't, don't doubt it. I prayed that prayer through all this mess. Every time Satan hits me with something new, I pray that prayer. I want God to deliver me, and he will. He's either going to take that load off of my shoulders, that burden I bear, that temptation, that trial, that trust. He's either going to take it off, And set me free of it. Or God is going to build these shoulders up. And give me strength every day. To be able to carry that load. Until it is removed from me. And I may carry it to my grave. But God has promised I will give you grace. I'll give you strength. To help you carry that load. Amen. God's grace is that thing. But God's grace comes. When we realize that we are not sufficient. I am a. Self-made man. 
I did it my way. Let the record show, I did it my way. You may do it your way, but doing things your way will get you boasting and bragging in one day a one-way ticket straight to hell. Amen. We've got to learn to do it God's way, but we'll never learn to do it God's way until we realize we're insufficient. I can't do it by myself. Just like sin, you're going to continue to sin until the Holy Spirit convicts you. And then you've got to realize those things I'm doing are sin unto God. Father, I want you to forgive me of those, set me free of that, and let me begin a new, to live a new life for you. We've got to learn that. Same thing with God's grace. God's grace never comes to us until we realize that we are insufficient. We can't do it. I need you, God. I need you, God. I need you, God. Do you understand that God's grace has come to me in different ways during this mess I'm in? God's grace come by allowing Richard to stand behind this pulpit Sunday after Sunday, saying, whatever you want, Danny, I'll do it. God's grace has come by allowing you, many of you to step up and do things I would normally have done. God's grace comes when I realize I, I can't do it, God. What are we going to do? And he will bring grace to us in ways that we can't even imagine. God brings people to allow people to bring grace to you, but you don't see it that way. You see, Ricky is helping me. No, it's God using Ricky to give me grace in my life. Grace is God's gift to us. It's one of those things that he blesses us with. God's grace. And it is sufficient for everything I need. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care. It doesn't matter. God's grace is sufficient. And he said to Paul, Paul, don't worry about it. That thorn's there and it's real. But my grace is sufficient. He's saying, Paul, I'm not going to deliver you of that problem. I'm not going to. You're going to carry it the rest of your life. But my grace is sufficient because it gives me strength to stand tall in the midst of everything that Satan's doing. I stand here this morning by the mercy and the grace of God. Why? Because I trust him. It doesn't make any difference what I'm holding or what I'm bearing in my body. God hasn't taken it away yet. So he said, Danny, I'll give you grace, and my grace is sufficient to keep you every day of your life. It is a blessing that I pour upon you, my grace, and I give it to you day after day after day after day, and I will give you the grace that is abundant enough that it will supply every need you have this day. Amen. The grace of God. Great tribulation brings us great strength. How about that? Well, boy, I've got a lot of strength. <laughs> I've got a lot of grace going on in my life right now because I'm going through great tribulations. I went through great tribulations when I lost Brenda. Great tribulation. I didn't know how I was going to stand, and I did sink. No doubt about it. I'm, human. I'm a human being. I did sink. I did cry. I did worry. I did fret. I'm a human being. You are too. You're going to shed tears. But in the midst of all that, God come and said, Danny, my grace is sufficient. I'm not going to bring her back. So don't worry about that burden being lifted off. I'll just give you strength to live every day of your life without her. Every day. And that's hard for me. But I know God's grace is sufficient. Whatever I'm going through right now, God's grace is sufficient. Whatever you're going through, whatever's going on in your life, God's grace is sufficient. It will keep you there, and it will hold you up until the very end. And one day, either on this earth or the moment I go to sleep for Jesus, I will not bear that burden anymore. But until then, God's grace is sufficient. So when you pray for God to heal you and he doesn't, say, God, where are you? Why didn't you? Don't do it that way. Don't look at the outward things. Look inside. Okay, God, you didn't, so strengthen me up. I'm going to have the, the list of strength in my life to bear this burden from this day forward, and I trust you. When your soul sinks in anguish, like Tish was doing this morning, she was talking about how she went down and down and down. When our soul sinks in anguish, Whenever you have so much going on, and listen, I understand one thing. Whatever you're going through may not be the same thing as I'm going through. You may go through a headache and it be the worst thing in your life. Doesn't matter what the problem is. And we need to learn that. We need to not make fun of people because they've got little this and little that. To them, it can be sincere anguish. You just don't know. We're not all made up the same. I can last in some things a lot longer than you can last. You can last in some things a lot longer than I can last. We need to look at people, have compassion on them, and pray for them, whatever they're going through. 
But whenever, I promise you this, whenever that thing comes in our life, and that anguish is so hard on us, that burden is so strong on us, that it brings us down and just keeps burdening. You know, we're going, we're sinking it so heavy I can't bear it. God, what am I going to do when we sink down so low that we don't know where tomorrow is and we don't know where up is and we don't know where down is? Our mind is messed up. We're confused. Where is God in all this? When we get that low in our life and we realize I can't do this anymore, many people get there and they just take a gun and put it to the head and that's over. I'm over. It's over now. No, it's just beginning when you do that. When a Christian gets down and you don't know where to go and where to turn, all of a sudden you better realize there's a wind blowing and that wind is going to come to you. And riding on that wind is going to be God himself. And he will come to us right where we are and he will say to us, Danny, my grace is sufficient, son. My grace is sufficient. Get up the best you can. Move on the best you can because my grace is going to hold you and going to keep you. I love you, son. And when I realize that, God picks me up, picks my countenance, and he says, Danny, I will keep you, I will hold you, because I've given you now all you need to hold this burden until I say, be moved. Hallelujah. The grace of God. The last thing I'll share with you this morning is God gives us another blessing. That blessing is hope. Hope. And I hope in God when we have his hope, we will never, ever be disappointed. God's hope will never, ever be disappointed. God will give us whatever he says. Hebrews 6, 18 and 19, he talks about that. And he says, I'll give you a hope that is sure and steadfast. Think about that. God's blessing I will give you hope that is sure and steadfast. My hope is there when you have no hope. Externally, the things around us, we see that there's no way this can happen. There's no way. I, I can't get out of this. There's nothing I can do. What am I going to do? I think I'll go out in the yard and dig me up some worms so I have something to eat. Bless God. When all hope is gone, oh, woe is me. A loss, a loss, a loss. When it gets that way in your life, you better realize that external hope, this hope out here, will always disappoint you. But way down deep inside of you, look and say, God, I need you now. And he said, Danny, I will bless you with a hope that is steadfast and sure. I give you a hope. And that hope is that no matter what faces you, no matter what you go through, I, my grace is sufficient. And you have a hope because your hope is steadfast in Jesus Christ. And all you have to do is hope on me. These things out here can go bad, but what you have inside is sure. And one day it will wind up with me here in heaven. And when that happens, there'll be no more tears. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more suffering. You have a hope of a mansion of life forevermore in Jesus Christ. Rejoice in that, Danny. Be proud in that, Danny, because it's true. God's hope. God's hope. It is the anchor of our soul. Think about it. I took a cruise one time, and I'd always get up early in the morning and go up to the level where the captain's was, and, and I couldn't get in there, but I was right beside him. I'd look. And we'd get to a certain place, and they'd put the anchor down. And I could go to a spot and overlook the anchor, and it was huge. Huge, huge, huge. And the more guys had released those pins, and all of a sudden you'd hear this noise where that chain was going down. That anchor would go out of sight, go down so far until it hit ground. And that anchor would hold that cruise ship. It's amazing. We got off of that boat to go to a little island, and we went over to the island. And when you look back out, you see that cruise ship out there. It hadn't moved a bit because it had the anchor. Fern sings it, and I love it. He is our anchor. I'm anchored in Jesus. You see, whenever they put that anchor down in your boat, you can't see it. It's down there, but you can't see it. Our hope is in Jesus. He is the anchor of my soul. I can't see Jesus. I can't see where that anchor is, but I know it's in God. And I don't care what happens in this life. I don't care about what I'm facing in my life. 
my hope is sure because it's anchored in Jesus. Can you imagine that me, me, my soul have an anchor to it and God holds that anchor? My soul's going nowhere. All this trial, all this tribulation, all these things going on, the waves may bust and go all around, and the wind may blow, and the fire may come, but God said, your soul is anchored in me. It is not going anywhere. Amen. Amen. We've got to realize that. It's the Word of God. You see, sometimes God will not take our burdens from us. And you know why? I can just hear God. God, I need you to deliver me from this that I'm going through. And God's smiling. He's smiling because I'm praying. I'm getting in touch with him. And he may say to me, Danny, I'm not going to set you free from this because now you're talking to me. Now you're spending time with me. Now you're learning to depend on me. See, a lot of times we don't pray like we should. We don't depend on God like we should. And we get in trouble, though, we do, don't we? Oh, yeah. We come running to God then, don't we? When we're well, we'll find ourselves missing church. When we're well, we won't read and pray. We don't need him. But you let something happen in your life. Oh, yeah, you'll hit your knees. And God, God take this. He said, no, I'm not taking it from him because you're finally talking to me. Now you're pendemented on me a little bit. I love this. I'm going to keep that burden on you for a while so you can keep talking to me because I sure do miss our conversations. See, sometimes God won't do it. But whenever he throws that, that hope out, we have to learn that God's word is unchangeable. God's word is sure. It's steadfast. This is the anchor of my soul. This. It is a blessing that God gives us. His word. And he says, Danny, this is the anchor. Live your life on this. And your soul is safe and sound and secure. Because I love you. And I will take care of you. You see, back in the biblical days... We're told about Jesus dying on the cross, and we know that when they had the temple, they had a place in there that had a curtain around it, and only the high priest could go in there. Nobody else could go in. And there, the high priest would offer up prayers for his people. I read this week about a man that described it this way. He said that curtain that was there, it was the size of it was 60 foot by 30 foot. Now, I think it's about 60 foot from back there to up here, about 65 foot, something like that. So you imagine it was that long. And it was 30 foot the other way. So we got a 60 by 30. 30 foot high, 60 foot long. It was 10 inches thick. Think about that. Our curtains are paper thin. 10 inches, like that, thick. And they said when they got ready to move that curtain, it would take 100 priests to move it. And God had him put that veil up because behind it was his spirit. Behind it was God himself. And the high priest, God's spirit was so strong that the high priest, when he went in, they'd tie a rope to his leg, had a bell on it, on the bottom of his skirt. When he walked, that bell rang. He would go in and offer sacrifices. And he would pray there to God. If the people didn't hear the bells ringing, then they would take that rope and pull it out and pull the priest out. He was dead. If he walked in there with sin in his life, the Spirit of God would strike him dead. So they took caution for that. Nobody could go in there. But Jesus died on Calvary. And the Bible says there, that last moment, God split that veil in half. And he moved it so we could walk straight in to his presence. You and I can walk into the very presence of God today. There's no curtain keeping us from it. All we have to do is walk in with the faith and the hope of Jesus Christ and say that I can come in any day, any time, any way. 
I could walk in. There is a place <coughs> not made by men. There is a place where I can go, a place where God's Spirit doth surely flow. It's not made by the hand of men, but it's made by God Himself. I can enter in His presence. We talked about it last week. God says when we come in, enter into it with his, in his presence with praise and thanksgiving. We don't realize the Spirit of God in this place. This is just church. I got to hurry and get there so we can have Sunday school. I got to hurry and get there so we can practice our music. Got to hurry and get there so I can get in the choir. Got to hurry and get there so I can get my offering, give it that 10 cent to God. I got to hurry up and get there so I can set my pew before somebody else gets it. I got to hurry up and get there. I got to hear Danny preach. And we don't realize that when we walk in those doors, this is a special place where the Spirit of God is. And we should come in there with thanksgiving and praise. Why? Because of his spiritual blessings that he puts upon us. I will bless thee. I will keep thee. My countenance will shine upon you. I will protect you. The blessings of God, we've been accepted by him as his children. He has given us inheritance that can never be destroyed. He has delivered us from all those things in our life that would destroy us. He gives us his grace, and that grace is sufficient every day of our life. And then he gives us hope that is eternal. Blessings of God. Inward blessings. Church, I want you to get a hold of this. I want you to realize how much God loves us, how much he cares for us, and know that no matter what goes on in our life, there is a God who is bigger and stronger. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Eternal blessings. God is going to keep me. He's going to provide for me. He's going to do whatever I need through these things in my life. And on the other side of this, he will make me stronger than ever before, outwardly, or he will make me stronger than ever before to bear the burden in my life. In the meantime, I will praise and glorify God and worship him. Father, help us this morning to understand the truth behind these words. God, we take you sometimes for granted we forget why we come into your house we forget about the spiritual blessings and we look for money for fame we look for healings on the outside we look for friendship and God all those things are temporal at some point they will go away Forgive us for looking outwardly and realizing that the greatest gift in our life, the greatest blessings of all, is when Jesus says, I will bless you. God, you saved us from our sins. You gave us an inheritance. You have accepted us. God, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for hope. No matter what I face, my anchor holds. And I thank you for that. I thank you for that. God, keep us and bless us. And help us to understand your word and bring us back again. And pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.